myself. Uh, oh, you don't know that you recorded. <laughs> now, the standard for behavior that Terry Lee's talking about isn't very high, so it's not like. Hey, <laughs> now. Not like it needs to be worried about too much. <laughs> Whatever. Be careful. You've got uh, Chief Furnace on the line. We don't want to say anything that'll embarrass us. Let's see who else. Inkins on good. Lance is on. Okay. Well, enjoy your meeting. I'm gonna go check the other ones. Sounds good. Thank you, sir. Mark Spute. Okay. Couple of deputies coming online. Okay, you're gonna have to change that background, Corey. It's gonna make me dizzy. <laughs> I'm kidding, you can keep it that way. All right, folks, we'll give it a, another couple of minutes and then we'll uh, kick, this, kick the show into high gear. Oh. This will be one where I want the commanders certainly on camera, but we'll want to keep uh, microphones muted until you have something to say. But the camera's good because we haven't seen each other in a while and I'd like to fix that. Especially Terry Lee. Yeah, but I seen you last week. I wasn't necessarily wanting to see your face all day today either. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but I love you. Come on. No, I think it's good for us to all know what we each other look like and and be able to interact that way. But we'll start with the commanders. If we have enough room, we'll we'll let the uh deputies and other staff members join in, but most importantly, the commanders in this one. Everybody has a voice. So, Hess, I texted you earlier about this uh, pilot that asked about his observation rating. Observer, observer quals, yeah. There we go. I just looked at his 101 card, and he's only GES, because he's like a lieutenant colonel that's been in the system forever, and... He's not done anything forever. Then he's effectively starting over, unfortunately. But if he okay. can prove that at some, excuse me, if he can prove at some point that he was a rated observer, he can wear the wings again. But you, the, so the wings never expire as long as they can prove it. Okay. Um, but the qualification to act as an observer, he'll need to renew from the beginning. All right. If he can find orders or some evidence that shows that he was appointed as an observer at one point, he's he's welcome to wear the wings still. We can get that updated. Let's see. Johnson. Lieutenant Oberg, good. Paul Jensen, who let that guy in here? Right. Captain Wadley's online, good. Mark. Huck Hanger. Lance. No. Chief. Inken. Okay. Give it a little bit longer.
Major Starks joined us. Excellent. So this utahwing.cap.gov email thing. Do I really need one where I already have a cap.gov? Uh, that's a conversation that we'll have to have a little bit later. I, I have one too. It, it's the same challenge because uh, I use my cap.gov uh, as primary right now. So initially when we put together the... Uh, the utahwing.cap.gov domain, I asked our IT group, is there a way to forward, right? Relay traffic from one to the other so that we can maintain one. Um, I think inevitably it might end up being that we all go to the utahwing.cap.gov um, just because that's who we are, um, just to make it simple, but uh, that hasn't been answered completely yet. So. Stand by. It's one of those things that's on my list to address because it's impacting me as well. <laughs> so there's some challenges because it is a it is a SharePoint uh, address that it doesn't really sync like the Gmail does, but there's a lot of acceptance of the Gmail side. So trying to get the two apps to work together, it, it's it's been kind of fun. So we'll certainly take that as an addressed point. All right, let's see. One after. Take a little roll call here. It looks like we've got St. George represented. I don't see Cedar yet, unless somebody wants to tell me otherwise. Got Richfield here. That's good. Price is here. Uh, I think we'll wait and see if we get Vernal. Phantom, looking for Gary Rogers. He's not on yet. Saw Paul and Mark on there. I saw Paul, that's true. And Mark, so their squadron's represented. Good. Um, let's see. Blackhawks here. Hi, Brandon. Let's see. Uh, Winther needs to be excused because uh, he got called up to support some, uh, some, what was it? Oh, it was border COVID relief. So he's doing his real job. That's good. Um, Allison's out because Scott Carlisi had a knee replaced and she's taking care of his, his, uh, narcotic infused knee. <laughs> uh, let's see. Wendover, I don't think we'll have today. And Logan is, are Incan, are you representing Logan? Um, no, not, I'm not. Um, Huck Hanger is. Robert oh. Hendricks. Yeah, oh, he's Robert. Cash Valley. He's our DCC or Excellent. DC seniors. Perfect. So Cash is represented. Excellent. All right. Well, we won't belabor this point any further than we have to. Um, folks, welcome. <laughs> this is going to be if if you prefer to stay off camera, that's fine. Uh, I kind of prefer to have you on camera if possible. Only reason being is I'd like people to know who they're talking to and what they look like. And But if, if you prefer to stay off camera, that's fine. Um, the intent of this call, be it that it's my first commander's call. Um, Mark, were you wanting to say anything? <laughs> um, I, I wanted to kind of set a baseline and more really to hear you guys as opposed to me telling you what's coming. So I know that that, uh, that probably turns it on its head a little bit, but the fact is, is uh, um, you know, we've, we've gotten to know a few of you over time uh, as we've traveled the wing or interfaced, but uh, not so much in a, what I would call a um, official or a formal capacity as, as squadron commanders. I did send out that uh, small survey to each of the commanders. I received a few responses in return. 
Um, so we'll kind of talk through some of that as well. But this is really an opportunity for you as squadron commanders to one, get to know each other uh, and then have a forum in which you can not necessarily gripe, but share with us your challenges and concerns and and what your hopes are as we work together. But I'll outline a few things to get the dialogue started. Um, you know, as if you were attending the opening session, I kind of uh, alluded to a few things that that are challenges and some goals that I want to potentially address um, in the short term as far as the first uh, first year of my command. Uh, the the uh, struggle that we've got is uh, each of you were appointed over a, a spread out period of time. A couple of you are either overdue. I really have to have a conversation with Alice. Did you renew for another four years? Because if you did, hoorah. Thanks, um, because uh, you're you're technically overdue from your original appointment, but that doesn't put us in a bad position. And uh, Terry Lee's coming up on her time in a year, um, but the rest of you are, have been recently appointed, so uh, less of a less of a concern there. Unless, of course, you're gonna you quit on us. Um, let's not do that if you can avoid it. <laughs> But we all have lives, and that's the first and foremost. I want you to appreciate that uh, that I know that you're sacrificing much as squadron commanders and deputies, and uh, and know that that I very much appreciate that sacrifice uh, up front, number one. And also remember that uh, that we're all the same volunteers in the end. We all pay the same dues, and we're all here to do the same thing, which is create a great program for CAP in the state of Utah. So, with that said. Um, Big concern, COVID has, has really wreaked havoc on our operations. I don't think anybody in the room would disagree, whether you're a uh, senior squadron or a composite or a cadet squadron, COVID has wreaked literal havoc on our operations from a month to month or week to week basis. And uh, very much a concern for me, uh, specifically uh, concerning the cadets. Um, We've actually seen an increase, as I mentioned earlier, uh, in our senior lead, senior membership. <laughs> it's been an interesting conundrum, right? We lose cadets, but we're gaining seniors, where in the past it was we'd lose seniors and gain cadets. Uh, I, I hope that trend kind of abates and we get the benefit of both sides as we get back into full operations, as we hope to do here soon. Um, so yeah, we've lost Year over year, just in the last year, 25% of our cadets have chosen not to renew. Uh, that's that's terribly concerning. Now, a good majority of those cadets were cadets that were part of the 801 squadron. Uh, Corey could probably uh, speak to some of that, um, knowing, you know, being a little more local to that. But those cadets didn't go to school or they were going virtual school and, and CAP was just another element that wasn't interesting anymore or wasn't part of the regular routine. So uh, we have an opportunity there when the schools start really getting back to normal operations to leverage uh, some ability to gain some of those back. But one of the things that I mentioned uh, was that if a cadet has not renewed in the last six months, I need to work with national to see if I can find that list for the for Utah wing and distribute that to each of the your commands. Um, I'd like to see 100 percent recall at least a discussion or a conversation with those that are eligible to remain as cadets uh, because those are the low hanging fruit potentially, right? These are kids that simply got burned out because you know you weren't meeting or you didn't have activities or you weren't doing things that were exciting that potentially we could say, we're opening back up soon. We've got these things coming down the pike. Let's, uh, let's see if you can get you interested. But really, I want that campaign to be championed by some of your high-speed stellar cadets. There's no better recruiter than an exciting cadet, an excited cadet to get another cadet back into the troops. So uh, look for that to come down the line as soon as I can get uh, a good report, potentially. It was discussed in the command council. Somebody brought this up as a suggestion if National could provide us a list of those expired cadets and getting that list to your command so that you can do that recall. Um, the other opportunities that we're going to hopefully discuss, and this is where I want eventually you guys to kind of share your feelings. I've got my big chief notepad with me, uh, given to me by a former wing commander. 
he said he went through a bunch of these so i've got mine here ready to write down solutions or opportunities or, or thoughts but um, a concentrated campaign of open houses when possible at each of your units some of you have already done some of these units in a very safe manner um, awesome i want to see that continue um, so open houses to get people through your your meeting places safely uh, highlighting what CAP can bring to your community again. The other thing is, is we're going to get recruiting and retention working pretty heavily with our aerospace education group uh, to, to put out a really pointed campaign. The other thing is, is we'll discuss and I want to kind of get your thoughts is potentially putting cadets where they are in an opportunity where they can sell the program better. And what I mean by that is uh, potentially putting them in the schools if their administration allows them, uh, looking good and sharp and clean in the best advertising possible, a well-groomed cadet. Uh, so we'll talk about that, but I want you to put that on your list to, talk, to think about. Uh, if there's concerns or challenges or, or comments that you want to make around that, fine. Um, the other thing that we've got is uh, our mission capability. I, I kind of alluded to that. The, the mission is changing, so our senior squadrons are going to have a little bit different landscape coming up or our composite squadrons. Weber is doing a fantastic job right now recruiting pilots, getting them squared away on becoming you know, orientation pilots. Uh, Scott May up there is working really hard to revitalize the glider program. Uh, so you need to be reaching out to Scott to uh, work out an opportunity potential for getting your cadets in those gliders. And then the senior squadrons and the composite squadrons working heavily to support those efforts as possible. Uh, but we're we're ramping up this SUAS mission, a lot of emphasis. Uh, Colonel Weisman out of Logan uh, is working to put together a SUAS three day academy to happen sometime in July, open to both cadets and seniors. So we've got the ops plan in works. We're trying to get approval from national to go to phase three when safe to do so as soon as the state meets some of the uh, remaining factors uh, that they're comfortable with to allow overnights. But that's another opportunity for cadets and seniors alike to join in something pretty exciting. Andreas is a very passionate uh, member. He's got a lot of energy. I wish I had the same energy he has. He's got to be 10 years my senior at least. Uh, that dude can walk circles around me, and that's awesome. Um, so we want to leverage that as an opportunity, but it's also to build out our capabilities in, in mission readiness. So those units where airplanes are assigned, be ready to understand and hear about a, an opportunity that I want to develop better, more proficient aerial photography capabilities within those units. Uh, specifically to have on hand at any time the ability to launch an aircraft with a very qualified aerial photographer. So keep that in mind. Um, lastly is this edu education and training program. I'm going to pick on Terry Lee a little bit. She was texting me all morning long with questions. What about this? What about that? What about this? What about level two? What about le level three? Uh, folks, if you don't know, the education and training program that replaced the professional development has completely overhauled what you may have been used to in the last 18, 19, 25 months, whatever. So all most of us that have gotten through some of these levels, uh, you know, I, 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 I hate to count myself fortunate, but I'm a level five recipient, which means I don't have to do any of it. Fact is, I'm your wing commander and I need you to do it. So I'm going to try to work very hard. To, to work with you side by side to accomplish it as well. Uh, the nice thing is, uh, to my credit and advantage, is um, my wife <laughs> is only a level one recipient and she's actually interested in uh, leveling up through the program. So it'll be nice for me to learn alongside her what this new program looks like and how it executes. So know that I'm going to be learning right alongside with you, but the traditional CLC, the SLS, and all those different courses that used to exist or were milestones as part of the levels have been completely reworked. They're now more virtual available. 
uh, so that it removes some of the burden, right? You don't have to go to region staff college anymore. You don't have to go to national staff college to get your level five. But while you have more access, the program has become a little bit more intensive when it comes to the number of things to complete. So we need to keep that in mind. And the reason I bring that up is because we are the tip of the spear when it comes to getting our members excited and subsequently executing the programs that are within our, our span of control. Um, I want to see a concentrated effort uh, by our squadron leaderships to getting our senior members to advance in the program. So we have to learn together, but we want to make sure that we're taking those opportunities to give them the opportunity to see the benefits of that, which is, again, promoting and also being trained, learning and understanding, getting the education that they need to feel successful and then having this desire, which is the last emphasis point I made this morning of building out our bench strength by, you know, by a poll, very straw poll. How many of you know who your successor is in your units? I see a whole lot of this, right? And that's not a problem, but it's a problem, right? It is how we've operated. And I made the comment during uh, an interview process for taking wing command that, that I'm literally one senior member away from quitting before having to dissolve a unit, right? That happened this week. I'll be frank and honest. Bountiful, Bonneville's squadron will have to be shut down, okay? The commander has decided to take a different direction at the, at the time, at, at this time, and that unit immediately went from being eligible to be at least a flight to being ineligible to be ex in existence. And it's a big struggle out there, right? I mean, you guys all have different dynamics and we're going to discuss them and, and I want to, to hear your feedback on them. But honestly, within a 20 mile radius of the, of the city of Wendover, there's 1,490 people. 1,500 people in a radius of 20 miles around that city. It takes two hours for anybody else outside of that city to get to that city, right? So we've been importing a commander into that that squadron for a number of months now from you from Salt Lake Valley. That's a two hour drive. That's that's both a serious commitment from a time perspective, but also a safety problem. I can't have members driving late at night on the freeway with zero lights or very few lights making that sacrifice if we can't support it local. And the biggest thing that bothers me about that situation is the four cadets that are local to that city that won't have a unit, right? That That's the biggest impact. So if we're truly taking a, a situation where we care about our units, we need to be developing our back, our, our bench. We need to be putting people in a position where they're learning the skills to step in if something were to happen to one of you. And that's not because I wanna replace you right away. I want you to feel confident that the program is secure when they need to replace you. And so we need to work on that together. So it's going to be a big initiative. This command is making sure that you have the support from the wing to getting the people that can support you, but are also excited about being the wing commander or the squadron commander or whatever, the deputy commander. So, um, so a lot of different things that I'm going to put together. It's been a week since the change of command. Those of you that were there, uh, thank you for being there. Thank you for giving the opportunity to, to give Colonel Fernandez a, a well send off, a well deserved send off, but also in the, in the same time, recognize that it's been maybe a week, but those challenges have been there for, for some time. Now I'm terribly excited. We're on the precipice of getting through to phase three. Many of your units don't meet the qualifications that don't, that don't, uh, uh, require you to make special accommodations, right? I, I put out another straw poll earlier this week about how many of you were doing virtual meetings if you were a cadet unit. Um, the answer was none of us are. On one hand, that was really good. The other hand, the reason I was asking that question is because I wanted to provide those four cadets an opportunity to participate out at Bountiful, or excuse me, Bonneville, that, uh, that won't have that opportunity once we have to shut that unit down, right? So I was trying to find a solution potential there. So I'm both encouraged by the fact that our units are small enough, and I hate to use that term, 
where we meet that 50, 50 person limit, but also the opportunity for providing, you know, options uh, to, to other units. Um, I know each of you are probably still dealing with varied opinions when it comes to uh, dealing with COVID. Um, I've, I've had personal interface with several individuals who have expressed one way or the other, right? I'm not sending my cadets as long as you're making them wear masks. I'm not going to send my cadet unless you make them wear masks. Where's the win, right? Where's the middle ground? The, the fact is, is we it, it's a very unique environment right now, but we're getting to the point where we have that opportunity. And so I'm going to take a little uh, a little uh, advice from my uh, my new vice that we should be doing everything we can to encourage the membership to do whatever they feel is is appropriate and safe for them to get ourselves in a position where we can we can be done with this. Right? We need to be done with COVID. I'm with you. It pains me every day to hear about these situations where cadets are are atrophy or we're losing them to attrition because of this pandemic. We have we have a means to solve it. We have the opportunity and we need to take it every every opportunity we can. One of the things I do want to have you walk away from and write down if you're a cadet unit or if you're a senior unit that can support cadet units is I'd like to see at least three or four Saturday type activities planned and in a file. Something that you can execute on a very quick basis, but is something that we can advertise out to the cadet cadre and get them excited about participating in as soon as we possibly can. Now, the beauty about Saturday activities is they don't meet the, the stipulations where phase three has to be in place. It's not an overnight activity, but if we can start planning these things, creating something that's going to be exciting, then publish it. We want to make it available wing wide, and then we're going to try to facilitate some means to safely being able to execute those where people can get the wing cadets together, not just your unit cadets, the wing cadets, right? This is we're a wing. We're a big wing, no question. And there's a lot of geographic challenges, but if we can get each of you with your staff, uh, your DC, you know, your D deputy commanders of cadets, uh, putting together three or four, and and I'd really prefer four because then you're you're squared away post encampment for a, a number of months, right? If it's really one Saturday activity a month, four months out, it's not a bad deal, right? But do some get those things on paper, start working through the ops plans, getting them to where you can say. You know, next Saturday, even if if it's just a week, uh, we can put something out there as soon as we go green on on phase three, or at least feeling safer uh, from a from an organizational perspective. Those senior squadrons that are out there, or the composite squadrons that have seniors, um, I'd really appreciate it if you guys could reach out to your to your neighbors and provide additional flavor and color uh, to some of those ideas. Out of the box thinking is going to become something that's going to help us really be creative and get these cadets excited about coming back and building back that that cadre of cadets. The last thing I'll talk about and then we'll open the floor to, to conversation gripes and moans uh, from each of you is a uh, big giant emphasis on our phase four cadets. So how many of you have phase four cadets in your unit? How many of you don't know? Cadet captains and above. OK, so if you don't get some there, if you do, it's going to be a big point of emphasis for me in the next little while to get those phase four cadets advancing. I think some people have been present where I've actually made that pitch already. Right. Phase four cadets have a lot of opportunities availed to them that we need to get them excited about. What what changes when a cadet goes from a cadet first lieutenant to a cadet captain? They start becoming eligible for a lot of different things, right? Region Cadet Leadership School, IAs, different other special activities. But more importantly, and I'll, I'll be frank and honest, there's a plaque on the wall in the wing headquarters, a plaque of spots cadets. Who can tell me who the last one was without Tim running down the stairs real quick? Who was it? Who wants to unmute and tell me? Was it I think it was Carlisi. It was. It was Rosalind Carlisi, 2000, 
and 16. Okay. <laughs> I think I'll just leave that on the table. We need to change that. That plaque needs to grow. We need more spots cadets coming out of Utah wings. So whatever we can do to encourage those phase fours, that's where I want you to go back to your roles. If you have a phase four cadet, put some extra emphasis on getting them excited about the program again, getting them moving through, giving them the opportunities to lead and then preparing them because they need to go to Region Cadet Leadership School, whether we host one here or whether we take give them the opportunity and figure out the logistics to getting them over to the Air Force Academy. What a heck of a venue to go to a, re a Region Cadet Leadership School, right? The Region does a decent job of putting one together. I can't think of a better place to put a cadet for a couple of days other than the Academy. I have lived there. Uh, my dad taught there at the Academy, so I know exactly what the campus looks like and you won't have a cadet that comes back from the academy going, well, that sucked. So, gee, but opportunities for us to uh, to figure out what we can do to make those phase fours happen and get more diamonds on the board. So that was all the doom and gloom. I'm going to open the floor. I want to hear from you guys because what we're going to do as a wing now is we're going to get you guys talking together regularly. Uh, commander's calls are going to happen a little more frequently, but we're going to make them very valuable. We're going to make them very short. You know, I, I don't want to spend two, three hours on one night every month just jabbing. I want 45 to 60 minutes of really directed calls, but it really comes down to what do you guys need? What's unique about your area? What do you think would be better? And what can we do as all of the units to support each other? From St. George to Logan, from Wendover to Vernal, this is the Utah wing. What can we do? So with that, I'm not going to do a roll call. If you want to raise your hand or if you want to just pipe in and, and we take the next uh, few minutes to talk about it, let's do it. So who's going to be the first victim? <laughs> Looks like Naomi wants to pipe in. Yes, because <laughs> I've been um, requesting from commanders to give me some names of persons that you would feel comfortable with your cadets to become uh, and now they're called chaplain support uh, specialists to be able to uh, support you and your squadrons. Um, there has been exactly one response and that's it. So I need to have some names and just just throw them out there to me. Go ahead and email email Chaplain Barlow or myself and, and let's get you go in so that I can start them in their trainings that uh, is necessary before they are appointed. Uh, it takes uh, the requirement still is in place that they have to have the um, BIC and TLC. So we want to make sure that that's going to happen in the next training leaders of cadets is a virtual one that's available on April the 17th. So that's just in next week. It's still open for um to registration and then the next one after that isn't going to be until october 17th so that's uh an important point for me <laughs> at least and to let everyone know that cdis are now going to be referred to as chaplain support specialists uh, because our duty assignment is changing uh in its scope as well so right be more mission oriented to assist in the mission uh, emergency services area. Thank you. And, and keep in mind these chaplain support specialists are vital uh, to probably some of the mental health aspects that are coming out of this post COVID period. So keep in mind that these people are needing to get trained but are could be very valuable assets in dealing with some of the uh, the, the post COVID challenges that you've got out there. Thanks, Major Hendricks. Appreciate that. Thank you. Who's next? Just, just to clarify, did you say it's a cadet is the chaplain support specialist? No. no. Okay. It, it's still an adult. Um, yeah. It's a senior member that um, just go ahead and hand me their names and then I can go ahead, contact them and and basically interview them, get them uh, prepared to, to mm, request appointments. Um, once that that happens, then they can start the trainings that they need to have 
uh, and even the, attend the chaplain, uh, Regents Chaplain uh, School, or yeah, <laughs> I think in the acronym CCRS, <laughs> Regents Staff College, there we go. Um, it's also going to be a virtual opportunity as well. So it's it's easy for them to receive training and we can get them appointed. It usually takes um, from the time that I receive a recommendation letter, uh, the, which is required uh, from someone in the either the community or their their church. Uh, once that's happened, I can get them through the approval process within two weeks. So perfect. And you can keep going. And remember that senior members have to have their values training as well. So either way, um, a chaplain support specialist is even needed in senior squadrons. I would agree. <laughs> I would agree. OK, next question, I'll, I'll take it next. OK, encampment. Okay. Um, we've sent out emails to get all students. That's the new ones that have never been to encampment pre-registered. We are already at one at 61 pre-registered cadets. So if you have a cadet that has not pre-registered yet, you uh -huh. want to make sure it gets done quickly because we're going to have to shut um, new student registration down because we only have so much space. Terry, I had a cadet that reached out to me that's moving to Draper at the beginning of June. And uh -huh. he, I think he reached out to apply for that. Is he part of that 61? Yes. If they okay. have sent an email to the UTDH at Yahoo, yeah. I've got him on the list. Okay, good. Terry Lee, can you let me know if any of my cadets that haven't been to encampment let you know or sent the email from Price? You're muted, Terry Lee. I know. That's what I was just trying to get back. Okay, so that's Cache Valley, right? Castle Valley. Oh, Castle. That's my green ones. I have a Christian, a Colton, and a Hiram. Yeah, like is that. it Colton Barrington? Oh. Colton Barrington and Kristen Park, or Christian. No, that's his Cash Valley. My apologies. Yeah, Only mine. Colton Barrington. <laughs> okay, I will talk to my other couple cadets who haven't been. I think there's just one up there. Okay. And if I'm to put a, a significant plug in there for encampment, again, we're we're efforting and working as hard as we can. I know Terry Lee is working her butt off to uh, to get this planned out and and ready for execution as soon as we go to phase three. Uh, so we're we're efforting as though it's going to happen. So keep that in mind. Tell your cadets we're doing everything we can to make sure that it happens um, because again. I can't stress enough knowing that what we've seen as far as the cadet programs is, is experienced in the last year, getting these cadets together doing something is going to make, make a world of difference for the long-term sustainability of, of all your units. So let's work that if we can. Hey, Terry. Yes. Can you read me my list of people who have applied? After she unmutes herself again. Is that Sean under that face? It is. <laughs> it is. I'm here. So I have okay. to paint my house, so I'm not in uniform. I apologize. Cedar, I have Elizabeth, Charlotte, Robert, David, Ari, Khaleesi. And that's it. Okay. And I do, I should have some that are helping you with staff. Yeah, I don't, yeah. I've been pushing it pretty hard to try and get them up to you. So hopefully Sweet. we've got a good group. Excellent. Who's next? Well, I can go. I've got some some questions. Okay. Uh, from Blackhawk Squadron. 
So I have uh, cadets that have told me because of other family conflicts that that's not going to work. In the past, they've gone to other wings, uh, encampments. Is there any restriction that you know of on that this year, or is that just like any other year? I didn't know if COVID changed anything. Uh, my understanding is there is no restriction to go to a different encampment as long as they're holding it, and as long as okay. they meet all the criteria. I, I don't have a problem with that. Um, okay. Obviously, like I said, the, the, getting those cadets together with other cadets is the priority here. Yeah. When we then, Oh, sorry. Yeah. And then uh, you mentioned is Scott May. Is that the, the person we need to reach out to for glider flights? Yes. Okay. And then, uh, la well, two more questions. Um, is phase three required for encampment to happen or is there is there any other waiver we could get or it has to go full all the way to phase three? We have to go to phase three. That's the only okay. way that the national will approve that. Now, so I, I guess I should should have given a little more detail. We're very close. Um, the state of Utah is doing well from a trend perspective. Uh, we're like 0.7 high on the uh, infection rate, which has to be nine or below. 9%. Um, the case count is at 12.7% and has to be somewhere around 10. So if we keep seeing the trends that we're seeing in the next couple of weeks, uh, we should we should absolutely be able to, to see that happen, we're hoping. But um, if anything, General Felco would probably get a little tired of me because, you know, I, we are so close. But know that the national leadership is also very uh, very interested in engaging a success story as well. They're seeing the same atrophy throughout uh, the organization nationwide. Utah is not unique, uh, but uh, obviously we want to be prudent. We want to be safe. So the more opportunities that we take to to create those environments for ourselves and for our, our units, the better. And does that apply to the flight academy also, or could that yes. happen even if we don't? It, it does have to go to phase three. It does, even though most of the cadets are not congregating in an overnight scenario. Um, any any activity where it's outside of the local area, the unit's area becomes part of that constraint. So uh, Colonel Woodward is working desperately to get himself squared away. I think he's got an alternate date that he's hoping to potentially use there that will give him a little more stretch time as well. But uh, But yeah, it falls under the same. And then, and then one last question. I had a senior member who signed up. Uh, former Army wants to go the NCO track. He's he's a, a cadet's parent. Uh, who knows about the NCO track and could help me with that? Because it's been hard to find very good information. So I'll be first to tell you, and then I could probably get Chief Furness, who's on the line, who's the Rocky Mountain Region uh, Chief in, the Command Chief. Um, we have the means by which to hook that uh, individual up on that NCO track. Uh, we, we do now have a command NCO who will be uh, part of that mentorship program to get uh, new NCOs signed up within the wing. So if that's a desire and he wants to go that route, we're absolutely able to hook him up. Chief, did you have any further color and flavor there? Absolutely, sir. Um, just have... Uh... That senior member contact your uh, N command NCO and uh, we will work on an answer all questions and uh, help that uh, prior service member out. Okay, is, is there well. already a command NCO to reach out to? There yes. is. Okay. Tech, uh, Tech Sergeant Sarah Lim. Sarah Lim, okay. Yep. Thank you. I was trying to look that up and that was hard to find good yeah. information. And, and it's because it's a, a program that's uh, very much developing as we speak, and it's. I'm excited for it. Um, I, I know the chief's glad to hear this, but I'm all behind it. Uh, so it's pretty cool to have uh, Tech Sergeant Lim on board with the command team to help out that process as well. So is the NCO just not 18 to 21 anymore? We're talking about senior NCOs. Yes, so when they were 18, they could switch to a senior member and be an NCO and couldn't be a lieutenant until they were 21. Is this changed? That's tech. That's that's a flight officer. OK, different. That's different. Gotcha. Yeah, the, the NCO track is 21 and older.
Who's next? Let's get some senior squadron questions. We got Mike and and Tim. What you got concerns, problems? You don't like how things are going? You like like how things are going? I mean, we like to hear both sides, but <laughs> sure, I've got uh, something to bring up. Um, okay. We are having trouble retaining new pilots because of the cumbersome onboarding process Okay. for pilots. Um, and I think what I'd like to see is maybe a um, something from standards and evals to instructor pilots. Right now, there's a lot of flexibility, a lot of leeway, as there should be. But um, I've got one pilot that recently more or less abandoned us, um, thousand hours plus, 600 in a tail dragger. I've heard from many people that he's the best stick and rudder pilot they've ever been with. Um, had been six flights with an instructor and still that instructor wouldn't endorse their form five with um, Captain Soder. Um, I've got another pilot who is a CFII, went up for one flight and they said, oh yeah, you're ready, let's go. So there doesn't seem to be, I think all instructor pilots in the wing obviously are qualified or they wouldn't be there. But I think a lot are demanding perfection or perhaps demanding that these new pilots meet their standard where they could easily already meet the standard that's in the, what is it, 71, whatever, is it 71.4, 71.1? Anyway, I think I'd like to see some direction as to, hey, this is, we're training to the standard or we're making sure that they meet the standard training the not your technique okay um while i won't uh, necessarily disagree with the cumbersome comment having been a successful victim myself over time um i get the frustration i i do um and we certainly need to make sure that the standards and evaluation officer is applying standards to his evaluations uh, so that's that's on our uh, our side. Lance is on the line. He can certainly speak to uh, to helping you out and understanding that plight and problem. Keep me in the loop on that, but I'm going to engage him to to reach out to you and address that directly. Um, because yeah, we want to encourage and keep these high quality pilots within the organization. Because you know, I won't lie to you. One of the reasons I joined CEP again shortly after getting my private pilot certificate wasn't so I could get free flying. It was because I wanted to give that flying skill back uh, to the organization. So to have these pilots that are engaged in that same process, that's exactly who we want to retain. So uh, Lance, I think, you know, you don't need to confirm, but if you haven't heard, you will be hearing from me. Let, let's get that conversation and dialogue going with Tim and, and see what, what solutions we can get there. Yeah, this is the first time I've heard this even happened. So uh it should my goal when i um originally talked about this is if we have uh, experienced pilots i was thinking they'd maybe need one sortie basically to get them used to how we do things and then they go take their check right yeah most of the onboarding stuff should really be around um really the internal procedures around wimmers if they can fly well, uh, that's something that we can get them through on the ground without having to spend a lot of money getting them trained up on Wimmers. So we could probably do a better job there, uh, getting some operational training put together uh, in this virtual environment. I mean, these guys are used to it, so let's let's talk them through it and show them the tricks the, of the trade. Uh, Wimmers is fun. Uh, the National Command Council meeting this this winter, there was some discussion about it, and uh, I. I I couldn't hold back a couple of times making some chats. I wasn't allowed to actually talk yet because I wasn't a member of the command council, but I was chatting it up on the side. And one of my comments was, it's time to bring Wimmers to the people in the in, on the devices that they use uh, to make it easier and then certainly simplify the process to, to launch an aircraft. Um, so you got an advocate there. I, I Like I said, I've been both a recipient and a victim. Uh, myself, I, I'd rather get in the airplane and go fly and, and have a good time and be safe about it, uh, executing the mission and, and, and exciting our cadets. So, um, good good comment. Thanks, Tim. I got a few other, if you, I'll be real quick. Carry go, carry on. Uh, next month on the 22nd, we're planning to hold a large, hopefully large, open house. 
Uh, we'd like to invite any cadets or composite squadrons in the area if you'd like to participate in that. Uh, it's kind of being uh, we're we're envisioning kind of a fly-in slash uh, open house, um, not only to for recruiting but also raise awareness, community awareness of uh, Civil Air Patrol. Um, so if that's something anybody is interested, contact me or my recruiting officer. Um, along the open house line, if anybody in the wing has an open house that doesn't have an airplane, um, I have pilots that would be more than happy to bring a nice shiny airplane to you. And if it means that we have to pay for it out of our squadron funds, I'm happy to do that. Um, I haven't talked to anybody at the wing about financing or funding there, but um, yes, uh, you have. if you're well, kind of did. <laughs> <laughs> you um, just did, but, we'll but no details. <laughs> I put it out there, but we didn't talk to the details. Um, right. So yeah, if you've got something coming up and you'd like an airplane, you think it would help you, let me know. Um, next month on the 19th, we're planning a an activity for urban direction finding. We're gonna go to a park here in the area. If any of you or your cadets would like to participate, senior members or cadets, you know, it's it's kind of a chance to use some of the emergency service qual that you know, for media and um, trying to do more activities or training. Uh, for instance, this month on the 28th, one of our members who is a part 107 pilot who's currently working on his SUAS qualification. He's a former, um, well, he's currently works for the NTSB. Anyway, he's putting on for us a, a review of the part 107 exam. Um, and it's directed, this one is directed for licensed pilots because those you know the um, the ground school part of it would would transfer over Faster. later in the year. We're we're going to do something with um, people members who are not currently pilots, which would include include more ground school time. But if um, and then hopefully in the next month we're going to take a Saturday and go through the airborne photographers, the the each of the um, tasks that are required and review those. But uh, long story short, um, if we have any of the activities, any of these types of trainings, you know, I'd be, I welcome anybody that is is interested. Um, if you can be here in person, great. If we are not at ground, we can make it happen, do it a hybrid um, format. But, um, you know, I'd like to, to put that out there to everybody. Excellent. Where, where are you located? Uh, Salt Lake Seniors. They're, okay. they're at the wing hang hangar. So uh, one thing I wanted to highlight, um, the Google wing calendar is back. Uh, with the new website, the calendar kind of went tango uniform for a little bit. Um, the wing calendar is back. There is a request form for submitting uh, events to be added to that calendar. Um, Nick has the ability to add those events to that calendar. And you can sync that calendar to your devices uh, as you would any other public Google calendar. So the, the reason I say that is, is I want you guys to start using the wing calendar as much as you can for most of the activities that you guys are planning so that we can get these publicized and get them synced to people's phones um, and, and start utilizing that tool the way we were before. So uh, keep that in mind. It's right there on the wing website under wing calendar. And then there's a little request form sends off an email, um, get those things added. Uh, so Tim, knock yourself out, fill out a bunch of those requests and, and get that stuff on the calendar. Also encourage you to reach out to Steve Baxter on your SUAS stuff, coordinate your efforts there, because uh, there's a lot of energy going through that program right now. So you get leverage a lot of that, that opportunity. Let's see, we got, uh, good grief, seven minutes. Who wants to gripe for three? <laughs> I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to gripe, but uh, I let people know. Like, yeah, it's been hard. We've we've had some unique challenges in our squadron this year that probably nobody knows about, which is fine. Um, but to kind of echo what you were saying about, uh, we set the tone. We have to be excited. We have to have people to fill positions. Um, we. We had to fill a position this year in quick and short order, and it brought that to light for me. So I want to 
want to uh, reiterate or or get on that bandwagon of of trying to train your seniors or the people you have around you so that you can continue to operate. Um, it's it was interesting and hard in ways that I did not anticipate. Um, luckily, we have been able to do some awesome recruiting on the senior side, and we are actually in a better position here this year than we were last year. So, but to to kind of echo or or sound back on what you were saying earlier about that, making sure you have your people trained is super important. And I found out the hard way that we need to do that. So, I agree uh, wholeheartedly. Like I said, it's one of the big emphasis points that will be about this command is is getting a, a backlog so you guys feel comfortable, right? So you you feel like every day you're not going into a unit thinking. I'm one day away from a, a Chernobyl event, uh, having an opportunity to have some real depth and excitement there. But it's going to come down to attracting people with the same spirit and, and desire to, to serve that's going to make that big difference there. So, you know, for those that don't know, Sean's done a fantastic job down there in Cedar. He's he's somebody that should absolutely be looked at as, as a success story. Some of these command calls, that's what we're going to do. We're going to spend a lot of the time talking about the challenges, but I want to hear about your successes. And the other thing that we're going to try to do with some additional technology as soon as we can acquire it is create, you know, basically forums within the wing. Uh, if we have to loot, if we have to leverage something else, but giving you an opportunity to share one with another, those challenges and those struggles, whether it's ES, whether it's cadets, whether it's, you know, flight ops, whether it's gliders, whether it's, you know, just getting cadets excited about wearing their uniform correctly, getting you guys dialoguing together. You're not by yourselves. You're not a silo. But the biggest thing that I want to emphasize, and hopefully you can bear with me for the next four minutes, is, is that the wing only succeeds at your success, right? It's not the other way around. The wing will only succeed if you do. So it's on us as the staff to ensure that you're getting every bit of the support you need to make sure that that success is happening. So we can keep our eyes open and our ears to the railroad track from a wing staff perspective, but I want you guys coming to me. So that's the thing. Squadron commanders report to the commander. Okay, no confusion there. The line is direct. You come to me. The buck stops with me in the Utah wing. So I am your champion. I'm going to be your biggest support. I've got your back. You have a challenge. You bring it to me. You have a direct line to me. I'm going to bring in other staff members as we need to in conjunction and coordination with Incan, the chief of staff and whatever support we can provide you. But the fact is my only success as your commander will be determined by your success as your commands succeed locally. So keep that in mind. That's that's my mantra. I'm here for you. You're not here for me. So hopefully that's clear. I'm here for you. So. Hopefully you found that to be re refreshing <laughs> or at least an opportunity to understand that we're all in this together. And I want to make that clear. We're all in this together. This is our, our time, our opportunity to come together as a command team across the state to solve the problems together. You're not alone. That are not just yours. They're all of ours. And let's make that an effort to come together, make those successes happen and enjoy the benefits that come from that. Because I can tell you, and I don't think anybody that really truly knows me can say otherwise. I'm absolutely passionate about Civil Air Patrol. Absolutely passionate about Civil Air Patrol. OK, let me make that clear. There is no better program right now in the state of Utah that can provide the things that it can to senior members and cadets than Civil Air Patrol. Period. It's on us to make that happen throughout the state. So thank you every single one of you for the hard work you put in both in your units and those things beyond okay i know it's not just about your unit you guys give more and more beyond that and i want to make sure that that's clear i know it we're going to thank you more for it and we want you to thank your members more for it and that's what's going to make this a successful wing and a successful command so any last words from any of you you got less than 60 seconds Jason, can you check and see if I have been fired and rehired as commander? I don't <laughs> know that. 
process I, actually happen? <laughs> well, all I know is that when I did the when I did the calendar spread, right? I'm a data guy, so I put it in a spreadsheet and I went, "How the heck is Alice still a squadron commander?" Uh, you, I don't know if you've been reappointed. I, I'd like to tell you that you're going to be reappointed if you haven't. Uh, <laughs> But I want to make sure that that's something that you're wanting to do. But we'll 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 circle back on that together. But that that was the one red flag that came up. I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> so, okay. But thank, thank you. you, thank you. Anybody else? It's great to see faces. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> and we're gonna, like I said, we're gonna do more of this. And don't feel bad about inviting your deputies. Okay, this isn't a, just a a commander's call. This is a commander's call that should include those that are helping you command, uh, so that we get those ideas out there. But we're gonna we're gonna leverage that technology if it's this virtual. But there will be times where we're gonna come together. Okay, when when COVID allows us the opportunity to, we're gonna find a way to to put together a commander's retreat uh, because there's nothing better than just sitting around a table, uh, drinking a nice lemonade and and really getting to know each other. And, and learn from each other's successes across the board. I know I spent a lot of time emphasizing cadet today, uh, but anybody that again knows me knows that I was director of operations for eight years. Operations isn't secondary to me. It's an integral part of the success that both the seniors and the cadets get. So let's, let's keep that in mind as we work and execute the mission. So, all right, well, I'm gonna let you cut you loose. It's time to go. Um, if you have any follow on comments, you know my email for now, jhess at cap.gov. You know my phone number. If you don't, plug it in because I'm I've got yours. I don't want to have mystery phone calls. I do screen my calls. I get a lot of junk. So don't call me from a Google number I don't have listed in, in e-services. Uh, but keep that in mind. You have a direct line to me. I'm here to get listen in here, and we're gonna empower you through the use of our staff. So till then, enjoy the rest of the conference and uh, thank you guys for being here.